No suit needed, son. <laughs> Not when you're working with the bearded beekeeper. So Adrian's a good buddy of mine and uh, he knows a ton about bees. I mean, you name it, he knows it. Um, you probably don't know it and he's gonna name it for you. But uh, he's a professional beekeeper full time and he's big on keeping these bees alive and uh, removing them safely and keeping them working, keeping them pollinating. And um, I'm gonna help him with it today. So, uh, you know, us South Florida boys, we, uh, we all have our nicknames. I'm the Python Cowboy. And old Adrian here, he goes by the bearded beekeeper. Now, in my mind, I've always had it to where when one stings you, they put out some kind of pheromone. To Correct. Is that kind of, you is that right? You will see that today. Okay. So when we get something out here and we get someone that stings us, you'll see a little bar with a little sack attached to the end of it. Yeah. That little sack is part of their actual circulatory system. Okay. That's what pumps all that 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 life juice through the bee. I got you. Okay. Once That's what kills them. It gets separated from there. It's essentially like almost like removing like the heart. It's not their heart, but yeah. it is part of that system. Okay. So once you remove it, that is going to continue to pump pheromones uh -huh. into the air, and it's almost like a beacon for the rest of the bees in the area. They pick up on that. Yeah, kill this mother. So if we actually go into a colony without any smoke or anything like that you'll notice the smell of bananas, like ripe bananas. And that's their alarm pheromone. No shit. Yeah. Wow. I've only been here for a little bit and I'm already learning a ton about these bees. Let's go check on our bees here. Oh, the old roof hive. Nope, he's pissing them off now. <laughs> so we're introducing the smoke because bees communicate through pheromone, right? Mm -hmm. That smoke is going to help inhibit the ability for those pheromones to be transferred and communicate to the rest of the colony that there's a threat. Okay. This hive's getting ready to swarm. You can see uh, these are what you call queen cells. Oh, look at that. Mm -hmm. And then right in here, these hanging brood pieces right here is a drone. Those are male, 2B male honeybees. So all these bees you see here on the outside or on the outside of that box as well, those are all female. The entire working force of a colony is all female. Wow, a bunch of so, working all, women. Love it, man. You got to love it. Hell yeah. <laughs> so. so first on the list for today, we're going to be taking these bees out of this birdhouse, transferring them into a bee box where they can uh, properly produce a hive and they can prosper. It's very interesting for me to see that you can do this without wearing a bee suit and these things, you know, if you're doing it the right way, going about it kind of delicately, you know, you don't need to piss them off and you don't need a bee suit and all that bullshit. That's exactly right. You want to work with them. You yeah. To, you know, you're, you're here to help them out, get them out of a location and putting them into a place that they're not going to be bothered by you know, people passing by. Better for them that. and better for us. Exactly, yeah. you know, don't get me wrong, not every single one can be treated in this manner, mm -hmm. but when you can, you know, they they do a very important job for us on a small scale. For sure. All right, so we're gonna give this a little love in here. We'll drop this down. This is gonna come out with a bunch of stuff. Look at that sweet honey. It's on. Careful. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Look at all this time bomb. Oh yeah. And that's that caulking they make? Essentially, yes sir. Oh and look, I can see the little um the queen things. Queen sacks. Yes, sir. Those are the queen cells. There's going to be a yeah. potentially emerging queen from there. So Adrian gave me a little bit of the raw honey to try right off the comb. And oh my dear Lord, it is absolutely delicious. This is cool. This is like... Woo! Oh, yeah. mm. Dude, that's the best thing I've ever had in my life. Yeah, just don't oh. move, don't move, don't move, don't move. Just relax. I'm gonna keep eating. 
I also was able to try some of the bee bread and uh, it was really good too. A little bit different, um, definitely not what I was expecting. Had like a slight, almost sour taste to it, but it was it was really good. Interesting, so this is the bee bread. Mm -hmm. That's made from pollen. This is bread the bees make. Wow, very flavorful. That's delicious. Yeah, right? Yeah, that's not at all what I thought. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Has There's a little more bee bread. All right, we got our little treat there. So now it's uh, time to get to work and start the actual transfer. So I'm gonna put that in. I try to make it as much to one side as I can. Mm -hmm. And then you wanna line it up right when you're getting it set up like this so they continue growing alongside of that. If you get pieces of uh, wax that are really wonky, they're gonna continue growing it, like trying to build it like that. I got you. You so, wanna give them a good slate to start on. Exactly, so, cause we're gonna be managing these colonies now. They're not gonna be out in a feral setting. Okay. You know, so one of the reasons why it's important to get bees out of feral settings, like people's soffits, trees, inside of uh, tree cavities, water meters, things of that nature. Um, there's a lot of pests and diseases that prey on honey Got bees. you and not Impurities being able to and, manage those yeah. populations properly could lead to like an outbreak of something you don't want that can affect other bee populations. Gotcha. All right. down here mm -hmm. for worker bees. All that covered stuff you see. You see in some of these up here there's even little cells of larva. Shake them out. Yes sir. Let's do a quick little drop. You want to get a good good grip on the top. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I pissed them off a little bit. Ready? Yeah. Let's do it. Here we go. So you're gonna grab right there. Just be careful. There's no bees under your fingers when you grab. A little over to the side, also here. And you're gonna give it a nice push pull. You got it. Oh God damn! Almost. Almost. Oh <laughs> son! Almost. That was not what we wanted. It's okay. always recover bro the old push pull just ain't for me it's hard it's hard damn dude how do you just flick them off like that this is eight and a half years of bee work See, you, you don't do nearly as much movement as i do no, it's just you a, just like uh, a shakedown it's yeah like i gotta i gotta get that shakedown damn son adrian makes it look so easy old trapper mike needs some more practice i'm trying to shake them off the hive and wouldn't you know i, I dropped the damn thing so you just throw them right on top as well. Ain't as easy as it looks, folks. Cleaning it up. Yeah, man, just square it up a little bit. Yeah. It'll have to be nice, you know? Make it look pretty. Give them an easy foundation to work with. For sure. So while we were getting these bees in their new home, Adrian actually noticed a queen being born out of one of these queen cells, and uh, it was extremely cool to watch, you know? This is a, a rare event and something very few people get to see. But uh, ain't y'all lucky old Trapper Mike was there to film it. Always on the digits. Oh, look, check that shit out. Finger stuff. stuff that's finger. a queen emerging right there. No way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm actually gonna, right there, look, there she goes, boof. That's a fully emerged queen. Yeah. That's just for you, bro. Wow. That's a fully emerged Dude, queen. Dude, it's really hard to see her, tell her from the other one. Well, she's virgin. Boom. They get bigger, though. There she goes. Gone. We are queen, my friend. Wow. New queen right in your box. That just happened. Sick. That was, that was cool. That was cool. You don't always see that, but when you're watching a Trapper Mike video, that's the kind of stuff you see. Dude, that doesn't ever happen. Bro. Super sick. Like, you'll spend years in yards with that shit. No! <laughs> like, I'm not even kidding, bro. Sick. So. Super cool. 
So we're doing the shakedown on top of this. We're gonna act, actually, I'm gonna set up something here so they can march in and you can get like the bees marching into the box. Sick. Instead of just like, cause you'll still get the drop like an all okay. big cluster. But when you get the big cluster up on top, they just go into the frames and it's over. Yeah. If you do it right in the front of it, you, you can get see them all walking. marching in. It's like a really cool, That's cool. like. Yeah. Uh, big exodus. Exactly. Ready? Yes, sir. Nice hard push. Wow. Well done. Thank you, sir. They, all start they are not happy. No, they're all right. Once we get the bees transferred and all shaken out, you know, all the all the loose bees, they they start to make their march right into the into the bee box and uh, it's pretty amazing to watch. They're actually sensing the queen's pheromones and uh, the other hive mates and they can take that right into the hive and, and track it all the way in. Here they are. All making their march in the box. Pretty freaking cool. What they're actually doing is sensing the pheromones from the queen and uh, following that in, kind of like a, a old bloodhound sniffing up a trail. All right, corralled the men with the smoke. They're making the march in. GoPro getting eight up. Well, we got the bees marching into their new home and uh, it was super cool learning about them today, interacting with them, you know, it was a lot of fun and uh, we ain't done yet. We got part two coming, we have another big job to do. The bees have actually made a home inside Adrian's home. Uh, so we gotta cut open his ceiling and figure out how to get him the hell out of there. So y'all don't wanna miss part two. Woo! The fuse and a bomb up here. <laughs>